Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my very special Thanksgiving in quarantine menu series. <laughs> I know, I think that we just need to do things a little bit different this year. We typically have anywhere from 20 to 25 people sitting outside, we make a big feast, we have friends, we have family, and it's so much fun. And this year, we're gonna be the four of us. I know, it's so depressing. But we're gonna Zoom with everybody uh, on the day of, and I have some tips for how to have a happy Zoom Thanksgiving, if that's what you are doing, on my blog post to this recipe. So I'll be sure to link to it below. So how's this gonna work? Basically, over the next few weeks, leading up to Thanksgiving, I am going to be giving you a course for this Thanksgiving menu that is going to focus on small quantities. So thanks to the poll that we did, it looks like the majority of you guys are only having about four people for dinner. So I figure we'll do quantities for six. That way you get to have a little bit of leftovers and they're gonna be budget friendly because I'm sensitive to the fact that a lot of you may be out of work right now. And so I wanted to have a menu that wasn't going to break the bank. And they're gonna be easy because let's face it, we have all been home for the last seven months cooking and cleaning. So I didn't wanna have a menu that was gonna be more cooking and cleaning. I wanted to have it be as easy as possible. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, well, let's start with the best part of any Thanksgiving meal, and that's dessert. So if you didn't wanna make a full apple pie this year, if it's just the four of you, maybe you'd consider making some apple crepes. You still get the same familiar flavors of the cinnamon apples, the ice cream, and then of course, that sort of starchy goodness of the crepes. But I think they're way easier to make. You can make them all ahead of time. And it makes a holiday like the quarantine Thanksgiving just feel a little extra special and fancy. So we're gonna start with three quarters cup of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of white sugar, and a little pinch of salt. Then we are gonna whisk this up. Now I've made crepes before on this channel, and in fact, if you want a larger quantity, if you were serving eight or more, I'll link to that below and you can look at that recipe. This recipe is scaled down for six. Then we're gonna add one and three quarters cup of milk. You can use whole milk, you can use 2% milk, either one will work. So you really wanna get this part going first because this is what's going to create a crepe batter that doesn't have a lot of lumps in it. And then we can add one egg, and there it goes. Have any of you made my crepe recipe before? I'm curious, you can put it in the comments or the chat. It's a recipe that I typically get a lot of new people to my channel, so it's sometimes the first way that people discover my channel. Either that or the French macaron video. <laughs> it's usually one or the other, or the banana bread. <laughs> so let me know, how did you discover my channel? I'd be curious to know uh, what video brought you here. And then we're also going to add two tablespoons of melted butter. Okay, so you probably have all these ingredients, right? Easy peasy, that's all we have to do, it's all done. Okay, before we start making the crepes, there's one thing I want to show you which will help you package them up once we're done. So I have just a plain plate here. On the plate, I'm gonna put a piece of aluminum foil down. On top of that, I'm gonna put another piece going just the opposite way. This way we'll be able to package them up and they won't dry out. And then to make it easy to microwave uh, when we wanna heat them up later, we're going to just put a piece of paper towel here. And then we're gonna stack our crepes all going the same direction on the paper towel. If you stack them in alternating directions, they'll stick to each other. So stacking them going the same way helps to prevent that. Okay, so tip number one is to use a nonstick pan. So I have a 10 inch pan here. We are gonna be using a ladle of batter for each crepe and one ladle full fits perfectly for one crepe. Um, so if you have a pan that's too big, your crepe will be too thin. As it's heating up, you wanna grease it with a little bit of oil and a paper towel. So I use grapeseed oil, but you could also use vegetable oil. And make sure you grease not only the bottom, but the sides as well. And then the other thing you wanna have ready is some sort of thin spatula. I think these work best for just kind of getting under the crepe. If you didn't have a spatula, you could also use a butter knife as well. Okay, I think our pan is looking pretty good. So I am going to take a ladle of batter and just put it in the center. And then you wanna work pretty quickly, so you don't wanna let it sit here too long. You wanna just take it and give it a good swirl. And if you feel like you're coming up a little bit short, oopsie, you can just give it a little bit more batter and just keep swirling. That's the secret to keep swirling. And you don't actually wanna to use too much batter because you wanna make sure you have enough for your six crepes, if six is the number you're trying to get to. If you're only wanting four, then I've given you one to mess up on and one to taste. Okay, then what will happen is the crepe will start to set. And as soon as you start to see it get golden brown like this around the edges, that's when you wanna go in with your spatula and just loosen it a little bit. Um, this is why I really like the spatula. Sometimes the knife is not thin enough to get in under there. Um, but it certainly will work if that's all you have. Okay, then I go in with my hands and I just give it a flip, just like that. And you can see how beautiful and golden brown it is. Easy, right? 
Okay, and then you only need like not even a minute on the other side because it cooks pretty quickly. And then don't even worry about trying to take it out. The easiest thing to do, I'm just gonna turn off my flame here so I don't catch this on fire, <laughs> is take our little storage situation here, but you just slide it off. See, just like that. And then we're gonna stack them all going this way. All right, so I'm gonna whip up the batch. Okay, we have our six crepes here, and then we are going to just put the paper towel on top like that. Then you can put one sheet of the foil like that, and one sheet of the foil like this. There. And then you are all set. So you're just gonna pop this in the fridge until it's time to serve. And I'm gonna show you what to do with that in a minute. So now for the salted caramel sauce. It's so easy. Wait till you see how easy this is. Okay, so we are gonna start with two thirds cup of just plain white sugar. And you're gonna put that in a pot. You wanna have a pot that's similar to this in that it has a nice high profile. You'll see why in a minute. And that it's not too skinny um, because the larger surface you have to melt the sugar, the quicker this will go. And then this is the patient part. You don't want to touch it. So resist the temptation to get in there with a spoon or a fork and start to stir it around. Sugar melts best into caramel by not touching it and doing more of the swirling lifting technique. It's just one of the tricky things about making caramel. I don't know, caramel, caramel, which one? <laughs> I go back and forth, it's like tomato, tomato, pecan, pecan. Tell me in the chat, tell me in the comments, which one do you say, caramel? It's probably my American accent, caramel. We seem to abbreviate everything. Then you wanna swish it around. If at any time it starts to smoke, like what it's kinda of doing like this, then you wanna turn the flame off because the residual heat from the hot caramel will uh, melt the rest of the sugar. So don't worry about that. So you can kind of see, see how it's melting? If you have a little bit of sugar in the bottom at this stage, see how it's basically all melted. Then you can go in with, I like these little um, nonstick whisks because it just makes it easier for you to clean and you can whisk it together. And see now I've got this beautiful amber color caramel made just from the white sugar. So how easy is that? Okay, now we're gonna do the next step. The next step, and this is why we wanted our high profile pot, I'm going to add two thirds cup of warmed heavy cream. So it just shouldn't be cold from the fridge because it's hitting this very hot liquid um, and it'll just be easier. But see how that will start to kind of foam up there? There, can you guys see, see what's happening? Then we're gonna add a tablespoon of butter I would probably use unsalted butter and then maybe add a little bit more salt um, because we're gonna do that too. And this is what's gonna give the caramel that really great bite, the salted caramel. You wanna make sure, like I would say a good pinch is like that, almost an eighth of a teaspoon. Taste it after you add that, but be careful because it's gonna be really hot. You wanna taste the salt because what makes this so delicious is that sort of salted caramel flavor. And that's all we have to do. Our sauce is ready to go. So you can totally do this the day before. We're gonna store it in this little Pyrex pitcher and then all we have to do is microwave it the day of. Okay, now for the apples. So the apples are actually something that I would do the day of just before serving. And I find after Thanksgiving, people need a little bit of a break before they get to the dessert anyway. <laughs> so it'll give you something to do while people are just sort of milling about at the table. So I have my pan on a medium high flame. To that I'm gonna add two tablespoons of butter. Then once the butter looks like this and it's nice and melted, then I'm going to add two tablespoons of plain white sugar. And then I'm also gonna add a fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay, then we are going to add our apples. So I have a cup and a half of gala apples. I like the galas because they're really sweet. Um, they're not too tart. Cover them with the sugar. I have them cut into like a quarter inch slices. And then we're also going to add about a teaspoon or so of lemon juice, maybe two teaspoons. But one thing I do like to do just to help the apples cook a little bit better is add about a tablespoon or so of water. Um, and I'll do a tablespoon of it and a half. You have to kind of eyeball it and see how much liquid you think you need. I'd start with about a tablespoon and a half. Then once everything is coated, you can hit the whole thing with just a little bit of salt, just a pinch just to heighten all the flavors. 
And then we are going to cover it and let this simmer for about eight minutes, depending on how tender you like your apples. Because most of this dessert is really soft, we've got the soft crepe, we've got the caramel and the ice cream, I like to have them be not too soft, just to have a little bit of texture. So I keep them a little bit firm, um, but you do what's right for you. Okay, so these apples are looking fantastic. You can see they're nice and caramelized and gooey and delicious. So another tip is after they steam for about five or eight minutes, turn the flame off and keep the lid on. And then they will just get nice and brown and syrupy like this just from the heat that's left over from the pan. That's how I got this beautiful color. <laughs> then when it comes time to serve, you can take your little paper towel crepe packet <laughs> and put it in the microwave for about a minute, a minute 30. You just want them to be warm. They don't need to be like smoking hot. And then I also heated up the caramel sauce. So I did about a minute in the microwave as well. Then let me show you how to serve these um, like they do in France. <laughs> so take your crepe, underside facing out, and then just fold it in half, and then fold it in half again. And that's all there is to it. And I think it looks really pretty if you can get yourself like an oblong platter, and we're going to just display them all up the platter. Then we can dust them ever so gently with a little bit of powdered sugar just because it is the holidays after all and it does make it look pretty. And then we're gonna add our apples. And then of course, let's not forget, our delicious salted caramel sauce <laughs> over the top. And if you wanna put a little drizzle on the plate, I think that's also pretty too. And there you have it. And you can bring this beautiful platter to the table and serve each of your guests a crepe with some apples and of course a big scoop of vanilla ice cream. And don't forget the extra caramel sauce, which of course you have to drizzle right over the top. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy this and stick with me for next week when we are going to tackle the main event, the turkey. I'll see you then, bye.